Hey, good morning. Ed Dreist here. And Stephen Reeker. Good morning, Ed. Good morning, man. And uh, yeah, uh, last night, a very powerful Zoom. We uh, we had the, So we're going to break it down into three parts, maybe four parts. Mm -hmm. But uh, we we had the opportunity to listen to Kim Hui, Amy Dunlap, and Adrian Ruiz. Correct. And so uh, we we just come off our launch. We were out in Salt Lake City two weeks ago, and mm -hmm. several of the leaders in our company, uh, Amy and Adrian, you know, we we had the opportunity to uh, meet them out in so here i am with amy we got to had an opportunity to meet them and it's then right. we also Stephen and myself had both had the opportunity to chat with adrian and both amy and great ladies a lot of good energy a lot of positive uh thoughts and on how to grow a business and uh so basically this is a. Uh, a little bit of uh, how they're creating some momentum in their business right now and training us on it. Exactly. Yeah, so here we go. Dunlap, Amy, welcome to the call. Hi, Kim. Amy, and then we have Adrienne Ruiz. Adrienne, welcome. Hi, right. Kim, welcome. Hi, hi. I know hi. you two ladies had a fabulous week. Okay, so so first let's have Amy. Amy, how, how did your week go last week? How did it go? Well, I have had two of my most amazing weeks so far um, in the company and also in the industry in 23 years. So record breaking, life changing. Literally, that sounds kind of um, like over the top, but literally life changing because they were two very energy changing weeks, like where I could really see the future. So amazing. Awesome. Awesome, awesome. That's wonderful. And I'm gonna talk about the activity that you took that would change that. And same yeah. thing for Adrian. How did it go last week? Yeah, I mean, very similar. It was a record-breaking week for George and I. Um, and I think what I think what happened was is we just did things a little bit differently and we sort of tuned in. And all of a sudden it was like boom, it was just like magic started happening. And so it was a beautiful thing to to honestly just participate in. I mean, we were just excited to be there. And like you said, I think when you tap into that frequency, there's really no stopping it. So we were just, you know, feeling very tapped in. It was wonderful. Awesome. Awesome. Now I want to ask you, Adriana, you talk about you had a record breaking week and you start changing things a little differently. Tell us what what did you do differently to create the kind of success that you did? And it's a record breaking week for you guys. So tell tell it, tell me. What was it you did that if you were to credit something that you have done, a couple of, let's say three things that you have done that actually pivot, that you literally pivot and shift your business. What, what would that be, Adrian? Yeah, well, if I had three things to share, the first thing was is really we took advantage of uh, the tokens that we had received as we advanced and um, were able to split those up and start sharing them and incentivize people to get started with bigger packs, to get started with the launch packs. So that changed a lot of the volume. Um, but what happened, I think, more that was more significant is that when you taught us how to do the T, -T chart, um, once I saw that, I was like, oh my gosh, like it just really opened up a, a better way for me to communicate to my team how they could build a bigger business and what, what would be in it for them. And you're absolutely right when you say um, you can't just come in and say, hey, I've got a really great product. It's going to do this, this and this. I think the more important thing is to ask them, what do they want? You know, like, what, what do you want? Do you want to win a cruise? Do you want to rank advance? Do you need more money for what? X, Y, Z. And that changed the game. I mean, we asked it before, but it was a little different. Um, when we were able to explain it better and walk them through the T-chart, all of a sudden they were like, oh my gosh, I get it. But also it opened up the door for them to do things a little bit differently with who they talked to. If they already had some ex existing team members, or even if they were starting from the beginning, it shook them up a little bit to go, okay, I need to talk to more than five people, right? Like I okay. can't just sit back on the five and hope that a hundred come. It's not going to happen. Um, and then really the third thing is, I think George and I really tapped into this energy of abundance. Um, and by that, I mean, we were not focused necessarily on our why that wasn't what was driving us. We already know our why, like we understand why we were doing it and what our passion is, but the passion project sort of took over and it became about how many people we could serve. 
And I think that was when like a, a light went on too. And we really were just in the flow, um, sort of playing the perfect game. You know, like I love um, one of my favorite um, authors, Matthew Ferry, talks about playing a perfect game. Um, and in there he's saying, you know, whatever, whatever, whatever is said to you, accept it. Uh, maybe do things a little bit different, but at the same time, know that whatever happens is going to be perfect. If somebody tells you no, it's perfect for that time. If somebody says yes, it's perfect. If somebody's indifferent, you're like, well, let me know, you know. So just kind of playing that perfect game um, helped a lot. Um, and I had a bunch of my teammates checking in with that too, because oftentimes you're absolutely right. We, we, we sometimes let the highs get too high and the lows get too low. And then some days are just indifferent. And so I think just riding those, those waves, you know, and just not letting the highs get too high and the lows get low, too low, but just playing the perfect game is everything. So I, I left you a voicemail, I think, when you guys were launching in California. And I was like, Kim, I just want to say thank you so much. I'm, I'm in such gratitude for everything that you're teaching and what you did just teach just now to us. I, I literally took you guys my chicken scratch notes, but um, they're meaningful to me because I like to come back. I just really thrive on little nuggets right now as we're building. And you know, um, you said you did uh, 200 T charts, and I did. I think I did. To a 45. So I mean, just going through so not even nearly as close as you, but it's such a, a thrilling way to build. Um, and it just really brings clarity. And I am such a big fan of clarity, because where there's clarity, there's confidence. Mm -hmm. And I think sometimes confidence can struggle when you don't feel like you're plugged in. So mm -hmm. I feel like we're all plugged in and we're just in the right place. And so honestly, so grateful. That was awesome. a long answer. Sorry. Awesome. They're so beautiful. What a beautiful sharing. Thank you, Adrienne. Now, Amy, what say you? What, what, what are the three things? Um, oh, uh, three things. Um, that's tough. I would say that honestly, coming off of convention, um, I'm. This is really hard for me to put into words, but I think I, I hearing. I think when you were on stage and you were talking about the calling, it made a lot of things make sense to me because I feel like were called and like what you were saying and so like um this past weekend on saturday i was at an event and just to like literally like touch people's faces where like they have the hope and the dreams and so for me it was coming back looking at okay as a collective and as a collaborative we have a responsibility to come together and um, this is kind of a masculine way to say it because this is what Lance said the other day, but take off our jerseys and come together. And for me, I feel like I just received this responsibility of, okay, I'm called into this, no matter how uncomfortable anything is, I have to make changes. I have to let go of some things that I used to do and some thought processes that I was having. So I let go of some thought processes. Like, I think I know all the answers, not really, but kind of like, I was like, I got to do it this way, this way, this way. And then when you call me on the phone and you're like, try this, like, instead of me trying to like defend how I used to think, I thought, okay, well, how I used to think something wasn't right. And I've got to make a choice. And I don't know if that makes sense, but I think I began to just peel off every layer and every bondage holding me back to my past. So that was a big thing in my thought process. And then the next thing, obviously, um, was the T chart, but very specifically within the T chart, um, I've always taught people to chase rank. Like, and, and, and I, I want to correct that because we're not, I'm not a very money motivated person at all. I, I, I'm not mo motivated by money in the least. But um, I feel like the rank was an answer like, okay, so if you want to earn a car, or, or you want to win, a, or you want to buy a car, you need to be at blank rank. And um, to pull back and really help people understand if you have blank amount of cycles, that's this much money. How much money do you want to make this week? Why? And it really that slight little shift really caused people it was a the slight you know like the slightest edge it was that slight little shift and i started doing that and i was calling you on the phone like oh my goodness i can't even stay caught up and so it was really that shift and so changing my mindset the shift of i guess chasing like the cycles and teaching people how to earn for what they for what they want and um 
man, other than that, I, I feel like I, I dove it. Like I am like, I, I thought I was, I thought I had already dove in because I work all the time, but it's a different kind of dive in. Like it's like seatbelt on. You said I should go to Hong Kong. I bought a ticket. I'm going to Hong Kong. I was in doing two events in California and I'm on, you know what I mean? And so it was just an all in. I'm either in or I'm out because 99% is a not a good word. That's mm -hmm. where I'm at. Mm -hmm. Wow, yeah. that's beautiful. I mean, thank you both. I mean, you what a beautiful sharing. And you're absolutely right. I mean, a lot of times in, in this space, people only are caught up in chasing rank. Uh, but it's not what rank is. See, once you, it's, it's not about getting to the rank. It's about how you're going to sustain the rank and, you know, having that rank and not having to drop. And so teaching people knowing what they want and showing them the roadmap of how to get to where they are. They are. It, it's not the rank that gets, because when you do those five activities that we went over in the T-charts, right? We talk about act, helping your team to activate, help them to qualify, uh, helping them to chase the incentives and the promos, right? And then to also teach them to cycle of whatever volume they have banked. And then last but not least is a rank. Because when you've done these four, four, first, first four things, rank will come, okay? Because rank is just a little bit of tweaks to make sure you meet the rules and then you get the rank. So thank you for sharing that. And, and I love. Yeah, so uh, that's, that's part one, Stephen. Of, yeah. Uh, you know, that was you know a lot of great information there. Powerful sharing, no question about it. Um, you know, as Amy said, there's no such thing as 99%. That doesn't work. And, um, you know, she has been very transparent as she's been going through her growth process and, you know, and, and tweaking her strategies for our team. And, and uh, you know, it's 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 paying off for sure. And, uh, and it's really getting people connected back to their why and then just connecting the dots, to, as they were saying, to get from where they are right now to where they'd like to be. And, and that's really what we're in the middle of with our team and, and the rest of uh, rest of the groups as well. And, and uh you know, again, it helps to be able to break it down into bite-sized chunks that are understandable and actionable. Yeah, you know, and also, Amy kind of said, get out of, you know, we all have a certain mindset. You know, mm -hmm. I myself, you know, you, you get stuck in your your ways or whatever. You got to, yep. like she said, be like an onion, peel off some of these layers yep. and, and let go of some things and move on and realize that, everything what you're doing in the, in the correct way all the time absolutely yeah just have to be open to the fact yeah. that uh, there's other people out there on our team uh in our leadership that that have been there before us and they've made some of the same mistakes they can relate to to wherever we are and you know again you got to fail forward and, and and be open to change and, and that's all happening right now in our organization and it's exciting yeah and, and, and the beautiful thing about the, you know like you said we saw this out in salt lake city you know a lot of uh, abundance, you know, people, the clarity on where we're going as far mm -hmm. as people putting, giving back, that type of thing. A lot of people that are involved, like like our, our mentor, Christine, they don't really need to be doing this at this nope. point in time in their life. You know what I mean? It's like they're giving back because they feel like they want to give back to, to a community to grow something special. Mm -hmm. Yep, exactly right. Yep. There's, uh, uh, yeah, they certainly, Christine is a great example. I mean, she could be on a beach kicking back for the rest of her life and, and, and comfortable and, and, uh, and relaxed and whatever, but that, that's not what excites her. That's not what drives her. It's not what keeps her young. I mean, she's an incredibly yeah. young and vibrant woman because she knows she continues to make a difference in other people's lives. It's not about her. It hasn't been for a long time, but particularly now at this point, um, She's all about serving others, and that's what really lights her up. That's her why. Yeah, yeah, but and you know, like I said, and and Daniel, Doctor, uh, Gubler, you know, they're all they're in this, you know, to to, to uh, create wellness in people's lives, but also abundance, prosperity, a lot of other things, mindset, you know, changing who you are and changing the community out there. Exactly, exactly. So yeah, so it's. You know, products are just the beginning. It, it, you know, yes, we have a great proactive health solution, wellness solution, uh, but beyond that, there's there's so much more to life as well. But it starts with being healthy, and, and then from there, we have the opportunity to grow and expand. Um, and uh, again, by serving others, helping others get what they want, and we get what we want as well. So it's really pretty cool. 
Yeah, so that was part one. We, uh, we're going to find at least two other parts, maybe three. But again, uh, three. Metro, Steve Reeker, reach out to us. I'd love to connect with you guys. and uh, Join us. And join us. Go to temovement.com. I look forward to connecting. And uh, as always, you have a great day. Stephen? Yep. You, so, you as well, sir. And okay. uh, get out to it. All right. Have a good Thanks one. See you, buddy. Bye for now. Thanks, folks.